my fellow farmers, March has definitely been a most fantastic month to play Stardew Valley. In my most recent stream, I took a look around the new desert festival. Calico gets a complete makeover in 1.6 and this can actually affect how you approach the Skull Cavern, but we'll get to that later. First, we're gonna go through everything you must know about the new Calico Desert Festival. These tips will help you to not get overwhelmed by all of these new mini games and merchants. And of course, how to walk away with this super cute cat statue. If you're new to the valley, be sure to check out my full guide to the Meadowlands farm. Now, just before we get into it, here is a word from our sponsor, Roar Fury and Dare Drop. If you love music and cozy games as much as I do, then you gotta check out Snufkin, Melody of Moon and Valley. It launched just earlier this month on the 7th of March. Immerse yourself in a story-rich music adventure, where your main focus is restoring a valley to its former glory. Help out the quirky and memorable peeps and critters alike that call this now run-down place home. The valley has been invaded by a bunch of hideous parks that are disrupting its serene landscape. Playing as Snufkin is quite entertaining as you attempt to distract police officers and pull out evil statues and signs, all while completing quests and building new relationships with the inhabitants. This beautifully crafted Nordic game is brought to life with stories, emotions, and a melancholic atmosphere set in Tuve Jansson's vivid and beloved world of Moonen. It is a wholesome experience for every age that combines open world mechanics with puzzles, stealth, and of course, music. Download Snufkin Melody of Moonen Valley today from the link in the description. I promise you, you will love it just as much as I do. The 1.6 major festival we are all waiting for is being held in the sandy Calico Desert. It goes from the 15th to the 17th of spring and opens up at 10 a.m. Pam also shows up at work at 9 and as a bonus, you can drive yourself to the desert from 6 a.m. on random days when Pam misses work. This is kind of worrying since we know Pam is a raging alcoholic, but I'm sure she's taking the time off to do something she loves. If you want to attend this festival in year one, you will have to get the bus repair before the 15th of spring. This seems quite impossible, but perhaps it's something I'll attempt in a future challenge run. Anyway, the Desert Festival is much more extensive than the Winter Night Market. There is a new currency in the Desert Festival called Calico Eggs. Much like some markets before it, you can only earn these from the festival itself by performing certain tasks or just even by being lucky. The desert is no exception here and there are many attractions to win prizes for the calico egg market. Now what is this festival? Much like the night market, the desert festival has a bunch of attractions in which you can win some calico eggs among other things. The calico eggs are the currency of this festival that you can use to redeem prizes at the calico egg merchant and villager shops. Now, the only difference is that you can hold calico eggs in your inventory. You could sell them in your shipping bin, but that will get you a fat total of zero gold. And if that wasn't bad enough, they will also disappear out of your inventory and chests when the festival ends. Okay, so how do you get your hands on these elusive eggs? To answer that, let's go through all of the attractions. Let's start with the most obvious one. When I entered the desert festival for the first time, I nearly choked with laughter watching a shoe and a cactus crab racing each other. If you can find the starting line, you can bet on which one of the three racers will win the next race. Your racers are King Sting, Speed Rooster, Shoe Biscuit, Escargo, and Cactus Crawler. As you can tell, there are more than three different racers, but only three can compete at a time, which will make sense in a sec. 
Choose right and you will win 20 calico eggs. It's not that much, but at least you can keep betting until the racers go to sleep at 11 p.m. If luck's not on your side, you can give this mysterious dude a calico egg to pick the loser of the next race. If you pay the suspicious dude what he asks for, the winner of the following race will be a 50-50 between the remaining two contestants. But be wary, if you do this and don't place your bet before the next race starts, you will have completely wasted an egg. But yeah, some might call this cheating, but I just call it literally evening the odds. Everyone's favorite minigame makes a return. That's right. You can also get some calico eggs from a desert fishing stand. This one is very straightforward. Willie presents you with one day fishing challenge to catch three sandfish or a scorpion carp. There's also another quest that will require you to catch a treasure chest or something that Willie asks for. These eggs should be a no-brainer, especially if you're in year two. So remember to bring an extra tackle, lots of bait, and a fishing buff like Dish of the Sea or Trout Soup. Next up is the scholar. He asks you four questions about the valley and its inhabitants. They're not too difficult, which is another super easy 50 calico eggs in the bag. Even if you accidentally fail, you can try again the very next day. The questions are drawn from a larger bank from George's last name to the amount of steps you've taken. Pause the video to check out the screenshot of all the possible questions and answers. Okay, let's pause on the hunt for calico eggs for a quick snack at the chef's. The chef gives you many different cooked meals to choose from, where you pick two ingredients depending on what buffs you want the dish to give you. The chef can cook as many meals you like until you get the buff you really want. This crystal cake is great for the skull cavern since it provides plus 3 mining and plus 1 luck. The chef's dishes also restore HP when you eat them, which will definitely be useful too. Check out this image of all of the possible meal combinations. It gets even better. Dishes received from the chef do not count as a food buff per se, since you can still stack an additional home-cooked meal and a beverage on top of it. Now at this point, you're really gonna kick yourself if you you left your sword at home. Marlin and Gil takes a break from the Adventurer's Guild to grace us with Skull Cavern quests. Gil challenges us to get a high egg level while Marlin gives us a mining or combat quest. Depending on what quest you get and general RNG, this could be the easiest or the hardest step in your egg collecting journey. The quests range from slaying a bundle of serpents to reaching a specific depth in the caverns. Another nice quality of life upgrade is that the Skull Cavern can be entered during the festival even if you haven't even unlocked it yet. This is by far the best way to farm eggs since calico egg notes will appear throughout your dive. When mined, these notes can drop anything from 1 to 4 eggs. They also have a chance to drop from any other notes, crates, or even from defeating enemies. Your egg level also increases your likelihood of finding more calico eggs. This level increases every 5 floors you go down and when activating calico statues. These statues have a chance to appear on a floor and provide you with a random effect from a speed boost to spawning more ghosts. You can get different rewards from Gil depending on your egg level. If you can reach egg level 25, you can obtain Gil's hat and a staggering 200 calico eggs. There is a lot more to the Skull Cavern Festival change and I will definitely make a more in-depth Skull Cavern guide just for that. Here are a few more other ways to get some eggs. You have a chance to get 5 eggs from rummaging through the merchant's trash can. You can do this once a day, of course. Normal artifact spots in the desert also are able to yield another 5 eggs as well. After collecting all these eggs, you can head over to the Calico Egg Merchant. Here you can buy several accessories such as cute hats and furniture, and a great selection of consumable items. This merchant's stock is randomized so be sure to check back for new wares every day. On every day of the desert festival, two of the townsfolk will have booths from 11.30 to sell some of their most liked gifts, spouse weapons, or furniture items. Now you can obtain Penny's furniture items without having to marry her. Take that, 
penny. If you die in the Skull Cavern during the festival, you will wake up in Harvey's medical station. You won't lose any gold or items, but in classic Harvey style, you will claim a ton of your hard-earned calico eggs for saving you. So really make sure you don't take unnecessary risks and have enough healing items with you. Of course, the traveling cart lady and her cute little pig and umbrella won't miss the sale opportunity for the world. She sells her usual selection of items which is randomized daily. This part of the festival is my absolute favorite part. Once per festival, you can get a cactus piece of decor from the cactus salesman at the bottom of the desert for free. There are many different variations of this and you'll have to come back for a few years to get them all. Just look how cute it is! I love Emily's outfit service. Every day of this festival, you can visit this booth where Emily or Sandy will pick out an outfit that embodies the player. All of the outfits are super cute and if you liked your original one more, all of the original outfits are placed in your inventory. The best part about this is obviously all the free hats we get. Last but not least, and much like the yearly winter night market, a shrouded figure offers to teleport us back to our farm for a measly 250 gold. Now you can stay here until the late hours and still make it back to your bed in time. The desert festival is massive. I would even go as far as to say it's Stardew Valley's biggest festival yet. With so many attractions, there is something for everyone. What is your favorite attraction? Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want another free cactus, be sure to hit subscribe. I hear the Stardew Valley RNG gods favor people that do. Anyways, I will see you in the next video.